What's up, Indies? Happy Saturday. Hope everyone is doing great. As soon as we went live, I realized that I need to turn my light on. So hold on a second. You know, you get ready for a stream, you think you got everything ready to go, and then you don't. <laughs> so, I hope everyone is having a great Saturday. It's definitely been quite a week. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, and I did not, I don't know about you guys, but my week was not nearly as productive as I would have liked. But you know, sometimes we just gotta push through, you know what I'm saying? So um, this week I did want to share just kind of a normal update with the Toonspeak campaign, right? I'm just going to kind of go through that every week that I'm live so that, you know, I can tell you how it's going. Um, so far it's doing really well. Uh, it's obviously kind of tailored down a little bit, right? Like there was a lot of entries at the beginning and now I'm probably only getting probably, you know, 10 entries a day, 10 new enrollees per day. Um, but it's definitely still moving. Like all those people are definitely engaged and taking a lot of actions. Um, I think it's generated about 7,500 Spotify streams so far, which is cool. Um, the artist follows continue to go up. The YouTube subscriptions, the Twitter follows, the Instagram engagements, all of that is just kind of doing what's expected at this point. So that's been really good. Um, I also am um, I'm pretty excited about the emails that are coming in, right? So at this point, I have about 250 people that have signed up for the mailing list that were not already on the mailing list, which is really neat. Um, and I'm sending them to, as you might remember from our discussion last week, my messenger bot, which is allowing them to go through the little points program that I had set up. So currently have, um, I've got, let's see, I sent out most of the ones for this week, but I've got like 10 more that I'm sending out and I'm not doing anything really crazy. Um, I'm just sending them little cards. I'll show you an example because <laughs> I'm a cat person. So I'm sending them little cat cards that they're just blank on the inside and then I write them a personal note and I'm putting some cool stickers and I think a magnet in these. So um, those are going out to the post office today. But that's been really fun because um, what I'm actually going to be doing is prompting them to take a picture of the stuff that they got and post it on a social channel and tag me in it. And then they'll get another set of points for that. So I've been brainstorming things to do for level two of the bot, which, you know, I'm kind of, I'm not like... I'm finding, uh, I'm trying to find ways to, you know, get them further in the buddy system, right? And they've, at this point, they've already like opted in for SMS, they've already opted in for email, and gone through the Gilded experience, right? So all of that stuff has been, um, you know, completed already. So it's like, okay, well, what are the next things, right? What are the things that are requiring a little bit more verification, and not just going through the motions, um, the way that some of these others are? So, um, I've been looking at, um, besides that, you know, idea to get them to post, um, you know, certain things, I've also considered opening up a Facebook group. Currently, there's a Facebook group attached to my page, but it's private. No one's in there but me. Um, I've not really had anyone doing that just yet um, because I wanted to make sure that I had something robust and ready to go when I did open that up. So um, I am thinking about that, having them, you know, get into the group. I also, uh, I'm probably going to have them sign up for the free version of my membership so that it is a little bit, um, you know, it's obviously not going to require them to buy anything, but if they do want to upgrade to another membership level, then they can from there, right? Um, I also am looking at a couple other social actions that I might be able to use um, another thing I considered was um, getting a Viper.io account, which we've talked about that in Entrepreneur before, is, you know, these different contests and different ways to do that. So um, I was considering, you know, getting a, striking up a Viper.io account to pad on top of TuneSpeak 
and see what other kinds of cool actions are in there. So it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, but the TuneSpeak campaign overall has been going really well and there have been a decent number of people who have been um, kind of, you know, coming into the rest of the fold after that process. I'm not seeing a huge unsubscribe rate. I think of the 250 people that I emailed and said, hey, you know, welcome to my mailing list. If you only want the prizes, feel free to unsubscribe. No love lost. And I've only had six people unsubscribe. So, you know, it seems like there's a lot of people that are actually into it, which is really cool. Um, I've also gotten messages from fans that like are new and they're like, I can't believe I found your stuff. And they're very excited. So that's all going well. So um, as far as a mini chat level two, I'll be building that out soon. Um, I did have to do some troubleshooting because of just all the different tags and flows that I was using for the bot. So sometimes people were getting stuck in a loop and I was like, oh crap. <laughs> you know, uh, so I had to adjust that flow and make sure that I was like, what is happening with this tag? So th there's a couple times when you're doing complex flows in ManyChat, um, you know, it, you might even after you test it, it might just do something weird. Um, but what's cool about what ManyChat has done lately is that it says in the chat uh, window, if a tag was added or if it wasn't, or you can kind of like diagnose where they got stuck. So that's been really cool to kind of like see this new kind of communication from ManyChat to the admin so that you're like, okay, it's easier to find now, <laughs> right? Um, I was also able to send them directly to a flow from ManyChat, which is a newer feature as well. And so if they did get stuck in a loop, I could be like, whoops, here's what you were supposed to get and send them to the flow. So that wasn't too bad. Hey, Brick, how's it going? Happy Saturday. So, uh, yeah, so that I shut off my Snapchat ads. I was getting uh, a good amount of click throughs to, um, the, you know, the various places I was sending it. And of course, one of the locations was Spotify, so I couldn't track anything there. But I didn't see anything like in my analytics to believe that there was something like really significant happening there um, where I, I wasn't seeing like a huge change or, you know, again, this is why we don't worry about sending a lot of traffic to Spotify uh, because it's usually a hot mess trying to figure out what is impacting your increase in streams and follows. Um, but so I ran, I let those run for uh, about two weeks and then I was like, Meh. I'm over it and I turned it off. Um, I also shut off my Twitter ads because I was getting a high number of clicks there, but it was not resulting in landing page views, uh, which was, that was interesting, especially to me because I was like, this is weird, you know, that there's so many clicks and so few landing page views. So, and I know that the site load time wasn't crazy high, so I couldn't really figure out what was causing that. So, but I shut them off, you know, like sometimes you just test ads and I gave, you know, everything that I've tested, I've given it a good two weeks and I don't, um, I don't usually like turn something on and expect it to do something within 24 hours. Like sometimes it doesn't happen that fast, especially when you're using deliverables that you cannot track, right? Like Spotify or something like that. But, um, yeah, I gave them each two weeks and I wasn't real thrilled with it. Go figure. So uh, the next thing that I am kind of embarking on is finding a new mailing list provider. <laughs> I know that MailChimp is, you know, pretty, it's pretty forward in our email training, right? There's a lot of discussion about MailChimp and a lot of the tutorials are set up through MailChimp, although a lot of things can be applied to any automation. Um, it's the principles and you just kind of, you know, the actual like what you click on to do it is different um, and you can apply a lot of those strategies to any email automator but I am for me MailChimp is kind of okay because I'm on the grandfathered pricing plan which means that it's not crazy expensive um, but for like when other indies are saying like hey if I want automations I have to pay $50 a month I'm like boo that is crazy to me so um 
So I'm researching other ones, not necessarily just for myself, but also for everyone else. So I think the ones that I'm going to be, I tried Active Campaign. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I tried. I know it's popular, but I did not like Active Campaign. I will be trying Send Lane and Send in Blue. Um, I also use Clavio for ecom, but if I can find another email automator that does like regular email and ecom well and integrates natively with Shopify because oh my gosh, um, then I'll, I'll probably be in a good place, you know. So I'm going to do some research on that. Send in Blue um, is, I think Send Lane is pretty expensive, um, definitely more expensive than MailChimp but they have a lot of other features and then send in blue you can have a lot less cheaper pricing and still get all the features that we need um, or that we at Indopreneur consider essentials for indies but um, yeah it's we'll see it like how far you actually have to expand that account to make it viable <laughs> you know that's always it's always the hidden stuff when you're in there and you're like oh I can't do this you know um, especially because a lot of the things that here at Interpreneur that we believe in that like an email automator needs to do, they don't really list that on their features, like features included or not included. A lot of them don't do that. So that's baloney. Um, so sometimes you just have to get in there and set things up and then find it, which is a drag. So if I can do that and knock that out for some indies so that they don't have to go through it, that'll be the goal. Um, let's see, what else can I share from this week? Um, so I'm looking at email, um, Thrivecart is still doing really great for me. It's, um, definitely pushing the pay what you want version of Gilded. It's the checkout's going really well. I actually am adding an upsell to it for my, uh, EP. And then my goal is to have a natural conversation going into, uh, the greatest hits so that they can like kind of get bumped up the products. Uh, greatest hits is it really, really tailed off. Like I sold the initial bulk of orders and I think I really like shook everyone out who was going to pre-order it, <laughs> uh, because it's definitely, it was like, whoop. And then <laughs> it just like fell right, uh, right away again. So I'm going to, you know, see if there's something that I, you know, just didn't consider about, you know, trying to follow up with people about that offer. But I think my diehards are my diehards and they ordered them and I ordered, mo they ordered more than I expected, but then it also like went away. So I'm going to figure out what's going on with that. Um, other things that I need to do are merch, which I'm actually really excited about brainstorming merch. That's something that I think a lot of indies get really stuck in and they they're like well what do I do I'm gonna put my logo on a shirt I'm gonna put my logo on a mug like you know and uh, I don't think that it, it really for a lot of indies it really takes like really yanking them out of what they're used to uh, seeing other musicians sell and being like okay what things in your lifestyle are gonna be something that translates easily to your brand and is something that like even you would use be interested in right other than flaunting someone else's logo I used to joke about that all the time in like middle school because people would wear all this stuff with Abercrombie stuff on it because you know that was like the pop the collar kind of scene and it was super preppy and I was always like you paid so much money to advertise their stuff and I wasn't even a marketing like fiend in high school and middle school like that was just that was just something I thought all the time was like, you just paid a crap ton of money so that you can advertise for them, which I, I thought was really funny. So, but if you're thinking about it that way and you're like, okay, what can I make for my fans that is not them advertising me? That's where it's going to get cool, right? So uh, I'm looking at that. I Sunbeam, my next single, I actually, you know, I think I told you guys. So I had a single come out, two weeks later, another single two weeks later, two singles, right? So it's been three weeks since those singles came out. And next week, it's going to start on the every two weeks again. And I just wanted to see if it was going to make any difference that there was a length between. Um, so far, I haven't seen anything of any, <laughs> any indicator whatsoever. 
Um, I'm not, you know, seeing any kind of crazy algorithmic pop. Um, I still have like 10 songs that appear on radio that get a few streams a day, you know, so um, and then all of these other playlists. Um, I have run some tests with Submit Hub. I actually, oh, guys, let me, yeah, I'll show you this. Let me pull up my Spotify dashboard real quick because I was super frustrated. Most of my top cities, and of course, you know, when we look at a Spotify, um, an artist Spotify profile, they show the top several cities, or I think it's the top five. So, um, you know, I, I actually had mostly New Zealand, right? Um, sorry, let me get this up so I can find it. All right, cool. So let me share my screen. All right, so when I go to my about section and I get down here, you can see that oh, Jakarta is in, and you can see that's only 15 listeners, right? Which I always thought that this was a little bit strange that they would put the top cities up there um, when, I mean, I guess maybe for bigger artists that makes sense. Um, I, st I still don't even understand what the purpose of this is, but um, I all of a sudden Jakarta started popping up in there. And when I actually go to my cities in my dashboard let me find that um okay so let me pull that up so you can see like my top countries and see india popped in there too and all of these like middle ground like these you know not green light countries which i mean typically i'm you know we're very for advertising to green light warmth um or green light period green light countries and there's a lot of not green like countries in here, which, you know, it's fine, right? I'm not super concerned about it, but like, I don't know how India got on that list. Um, you know, obviously there's just a few in here that I'm like, where did this come from? They've never been in my listeners for the last 28 days before. So I think that that's really strange. And for the longest time, it was just Australia um, that was, you know, they were almost all in the top and then it was Chicago and Nashville, which is where I am. So it made sense. And then now like Jakarta is like popping up in there. I'm like, I've been working on clean data so hard <laughs> for so long that it's just like kind of frustrating. Um, and I, this is what I figured out. I figured out, I think it's this playlist, which, and I'm going to speak to this. This was a submit hub playlist acceptance right and so it's got 90 songs on it and there was actually kind of a warning about this one in submit hub that the playlist had a lot more followers than it had like a lot of them were not active um, and that they also had kind of an unusual growth pattern in followers which means they could have been buying followers um, in order to basically be on submit hub and be able to say that they're a playlister so you know at first I was like okay there's a lot of streams coming from this you know cool but I think that this is the one that's suspect um, just based on the numbers that I've seen from it um, and because it had this like question mark in it um, it literally is like ugh, the only playlist really <laughs> that's like that so um, yeah, so I think that this one is bringing in some questionable traffic. Now, if people are streaming it in those countries, great, um, but they just started to rise so fast in my analytics dashboard that I was just kind of like, well, okay then, um, you know, and if you look, you can see here like where, like Vienna popped up out of nowhere, uh, Greece popped up out of nowhere. My top cities were all of these Australian cities, and then these in the United States, and then Oslo in Norway. Um, oh, yeah, and New Zealand, actually, as well. And then just a bunch of these other ones popped up. So it is what it is, I guess. Um, but it does lead me to believe that there are some playlists on Submit Hub that may not be super clean, which, I mean... I kind of knew that already. I was I was expecting that, but I was bummed to see it come to fruition. Uh, otherwise, Submit Hub has been okay. Um, you know, I haven't had a release now for 
uh, about three weeks. So um, I actually just started a submission campaign for Sunbeam, which comes out on Friday. I just started a campaign, a submit hub campaign for that. Um, I was able to find I actually um, Jesse, our basic printer, <laughs> Jesse, our agency tech, and my uh, he's also a founder coach. He helped me kind of go through and analyze some of the like sub genres of electronic music because holy mackerel, <laughs> there are just so many. And there's a lot of like nuances to these different um, these different kinds of genres that I don't really understand or I am not super familiar with. So um, he loved digging into that. He's kind of a nerd about that stuff, which was great for me <laughs> because then he could help me figure this stuff out. So I was able to figure out better electronic subgenres to submit to for these different songs. So that started, that kicked off yesterday um, in the afternoon. And let me look here. I think I've, like I submitted to maybe 15 curators oh, at 10. And I got two no thank yous since then. So, um, you know, we'll see how it turns out. But for the most part, like I've not, it's not been crazy, right? I haven't gotten placed on anything really significant. And what I discovered is that... Um, a lot of the submit hub submissions I was doing for the cinematic slash orchestral ones, they were just like nobody actually wants cinematic kind of music. Like I, they all wanted like this, you know, floaty piano ambient kind of stuff. Um, so everything on submit hub under epic slash cinematic to me is not epic or cinematic. <laughs> and that's probably just because there is... Um, there aren't just there just aren't a lot of places where it makes sense uh, and there aren't a lot of playlists for it so especially not with vocals right so that's been what it is um I'm trying to think I mean like I said this week has been nuts I'm sure it has been for everybody um so I don't know how much I actually got accomplished I did start restructuring my membership a little bit to include so once I got it a little bit more figured out um, Squarespace blogs are pretty flexible and can be used in a lot of different ways so I'll show you on this like dummy site that I set up or this dummy section okay so um, when we went to pages here, you can see there's all kinds of crap down here that's not listed. <laughs> so I play in the background of my site a lot. <laughs> um, but I started adding basically everything that my fans were going to get early. Um, like what fa some fans are getting like early art, some are getting the early listen, some are getting the download, some aren't. Some only get the orchestral downloads and some only get the remix downloads and then some get both. So I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to organize this? Like I feel, I felt like it was really complex and it was really complex the way that I had it set up. And then I figured out um, through, you know, just looking at other sites and researching and whatever that I could actually use a blog like this where I could put in all this stuff, um, you know, you can see there's some in draft and some that are scheduled here, but essentially I could put these in and schedule them so that they would auto-populate and then create a page using categories and tags, uh, which I, kn I know that that's something that bloggers have done, but um, I was actually really surprised that I just hadn't thought of this. But essentially, like, for example, here's these, right? Um, all of these are populating from this blog that I just showed you, but um, this, for example, is only the early listens, and this is only the art reveals. Um, oh, actually, no, it's not anymore, but I think it's because I changed it. So let's fix it, <laughs> and then I can show you how this works. So if you go into the, this is just what's called a summary block, and you select the blog that you're choosing it from. So that's pretty easy. Um, I just select the one blog where everything is set and you know you can do all these different design things in here choose like if you're showing the thumbnail or not but you can also do a filter so 
in theory, um, like for everything that was find your way, for example, um, I tagged find your way, which is why basically everything that is about the find your way remix or the find your way orchestral populates here and that's it. Um, if I wanted to do it by art, see, I have a category filter called early art. And so everything that is early art is tagged there. This is the exact same kind of block. It's just I had the image included and had this like read more. And so you just that's in the display settings here. So like if I wanted to do that here, um, I could go down and oops, wait, display. Um, I could show the thumbnail and I could create, you know, a grid and make it look the same, you know, through the layout carousel right so that's you can do all of that stuff um i would rather have a list and not show the thumbnail <laughs> so um but yeah so then i realized that i could do this by song i could do this by membership level i could do this by you know the type of content so i've started to kind of play around with that a lot more so that i can make the membership just a little bit more intuitive for people who just want one segment of things instead of just having it on this like big old page like this where it's like what is it you know and I am using like this like ooh la la you know with a blurred out cover for the art reveal um, so that they don't just see it and then be like okay I saw it right if I just put the thumbnail in there that's the cover they'd be like okay I saw it I don't need to open it <laughs> and I have more stuff in there so I want people to go in and then for the download, I've got this little bitmoji that's like, hey, download your stuff here. So, um, yeah, I think it's I think it's cool. I like it so far. So I did do a lot of work on that this week. Um, and then I also just launched some general um, fan finder ads. I actually have um, I'm getting the the video together for Sunbeam, which is the upcoming single. The remix is coming out first on Friday, and then the orchestral, it's a cello version, really. That's coming out on two weeks after that, so the 26th, I think. Um, and so that's just two cellos, piano, vocal. And I actually hired a cellist, and I said, hey, so can you take video of you playing the song, like one with an image of your hand, one that's like out wide, and one that's like at the bow level, and um, we're going to have, you know, those those three, there's three shots and there's two cello parts. So I had her shoot all of that. And then I'm doing keys and vocals and I'm, we're going to upload it kind of in this zoom style look. It's not really going to be zoom, but it is, it's going to be multi frame and kind of changing around between them. And that'll be the first like real fan finder that I've done for this release pattern. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I don't necessarily have to get it done in the next couple days or anything, but do want to get it up fairly soon. Um, and my members get access to it before it goes out. So it's like time is of the essence. Got to get it done. So that's another thing that I'm working on this coming week. Um, Otherwise, that's pretty much it, guys. If you have questions, I'm here for it. Otherwise, this was a short episode. I think, um, you know, like I said, crazy week. Hopefully, I will have uh, more stuff to bring back to you after, you know, things have calmed down a little bit and I'm able to knock out some more stuff. Um, I definitely will report back on these email automations that I'm trying out. Um, and I'm going to be working in Shopify a little bit as well. My store has been... I just haven't had my store up for the last several months because I really just wanted everyone to focus on the greatest hits release. So I'm going to actually be designing and launching that as well. So hopefully I'll be able to show you some things on Shopify next week. Fingers crossed. And I'll be sure to come back with some two cents about um, or like sharing some of the things that I developed for merch because uh, the Sunbeam merch is going to be coming real soon. So I'm very excited about it. All right, guys. We made this one efficient. So I hope uh, that everybody is mentally healthy after this past week and that you're continuing to keep your wits about you. I know some, some states are opening up and some are still locked down and we've got a lot of um, political and social things happening. So just concentrate on the music, you know? 
Don't let all of that distract you. Get off socials unless you're doing your artist stuff and just let your heart guide you to do music things because it's a good time for it. All right. I guess I will see you next week. Come back and we'll talk about a lot of things. (laughs) All right, Indies. Have a good Saturday. Bye. Thank you.